What is going on, everybody? And in this video, we're providing you a state of the market and stock picks for May 31st, 2023. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as I do provide daily and weekly updates to get you prepared for the day and the week ahead in this glorious market. Now, as you can see, we did have a little bit of a dump today, but is that actually a retest of essentially the 4,200? We actually just came back below we did dip below the 4200 this morning and then we kind of retraced back uh before close uh now what's interesting in this market as of uh, the past week or so probably about the past uh, two weeks at this point we've been talking about the debt ceiling and we originally were were told that the first would be essentially the deadline. And then we find out late last week that, no, we got till the end of this week. So we don't really know for sure how long we have. Uh, we did get a warning last Thursday uh, that uh, we could be potentially running into risk of getting down, our credit downgraded uh, coming into the, this uh june 1st approach with with no done deal now they did come up with a preliminary um, agreement over the weekend and then today they started voting on it uh, i believe it passed the first part of it uh, but we have to see what happens uh, with the second part obviously uh, there's a lot of potential concerns with it as there is uh, no real aside from a i believe it's a 25 or 30 billion might even be 50 billion excuse me uh essentially that uh, is taken out of the budget and potential freezing for a year uh it pretty much gives biden uh executive power to pretty much just let the monitor uh, the money printer just print uh at this point and that could be a really concerning aspect and could lead to a lot of other issues um, but we will see what happens as of right now. Uh, the, the market is holding up right? and understand that uh, the, the only real stocks that are holding up the market currently right now are the top seven stocks, uh, primarily AI. Uh, Broadcom has been huge as well. Another big AI. Anytime a company mentions AI or talk about making a 10x on uh on the future uh is concerning because if they don't put out those kinds of numbers which in the video really wasn't putting out those numbers it was just a massive projection that they had that caused them to just rip the way it did but ultimately understand that if they do not if the next um couple of earnings do not show that uh that could be a huge downfall uh, and understand what is that is going to lead right it's going to kill this hype cycle because that is single-handedly holding up the market, is this whole AI cycle. I do believe it does help and it does save time and it makes a big impact, but uh, I don't think it's going to be quite what a lot of people uh, think it may be. I think there's still, you still need professionals on a lot of different fields that it does cover, uh, just to make sure it does provide a good base, uh, a base or founda foundation knowledge to build off of if you already have the knowledge, uh, but ultimately understand that it's not uh, it's not just that. So with that being said, again, it's very, uh, very quiet week aside from the debt ceiling stuff. And we got non farms on Friday. Uh, so that will be important It is a short week anyway. Uh, so we will see how this week finishes out and then we'll start June and we'll see how June takes us uh, normally when talking about a normal cycle, uh, June is kind of the month that you kind of buy the dip on June and then uh, you kind of skate to the end of the year. But it's been oddly weird lately, especially because of the way the news has kind of come out for everything. Um, it's obviously been pushing up because of uh, this the debt ceiling deal that's been talked about and so the market's trying to price that in but it's still struggling to push up even though when we push up we do sell off quite a bit so it's like we have these huge push-ups as short covering and then uh just complete dumps when you get to these levels and they're fast the dumps are really fast and that's that's what's concerning right is as you're watching price action, the dumps are very quick. Uh, you may take some, get some big green candles, but it only takes 
Um, sometimes it's the only thing in a day, right? And you get these huge uh, red candles just out of nowhere. And so and the bonds themselves have started pushing back up over the past couple of days, which is interesting because they are pushing along with the market. So what does that mean? Does that mean eventually that the bonds, essentially the market's going to start selling off and catching up to the bonds as people typically only hedge against bonds if there's if there's concern? And there's been a lot of chatter about China. There's been a lot of uh, chatter about different things in that category, uh, which could be concerning. But uh, again, we'll have to see. Uh, but as of right now, uh, you're trying to play a trend. Uh, the market really hasn't won either side, to be honest. I mean, aside from NASDAQ and the, those top seven stocks, which if you've been playing those top seven stocks, they've done extremely well. I've been in and out of a couple of them, but um, ultimately they're, they're too overextended. Uh, this run off of these seven to eight stocks is just isn't going to suffice to hold up the market. And with that being said, we will we will wait and see, right? We have to also understand that the Fed has said that there will be a recession at the end of the year uh, and that they are going to continue to raise rates, right? The odds of the next um, monetary policy, which is right around the corner, is supposed to be another 25 point uh, basis increase. And if uh, inflation is coming down so much, why are they continuing to increase rates? Uh, ultimately, maybe trying to front run it even more to where that it breaks stuff quicker uh, could be the case. But again, I don't think we're going to hear anything about banks until this debt ceiling thing is completely finalized uh, and, and put to rest, unless something just comes out of left field that we're not aware of, and just which I'm sure it's happening right now. Uh, but I, as we've seen, a lot of news is um, is filtered uh, when it comes to banks. Uh, because uh, First Republic, right, it was it would have failed way back when SVB failed, uh, but they quickly um, put in, you know, what was it, $30 billion, uh, to try to keep it afloat for a month for it to have earnings and then just crater at that point too. So with that being said, again, I'm not trying to fear monger here. Uh, just you have to be extremely cautious in these moves. Just are not... Um, uh, are very much hyped that they've been, these tech stocks have been a safe haven. And so people have just been pouring their money in there because they don't know where else to put it. Uh, you can't really hold on to cash because you don't know what's going on with a dollar. Uh, you can't really um, hold any other stocks because everything else is pretty much cratered at 52 week lows. So it's just, a, again, an interesting uh, spot that we're in. And we're, again, just waiting for news. And it's a, a struggle back and forth. One minute there's a deal, the next minute there's not. Somebody's walking out. Um, again, there's just a whole slew of things. So we'll continue to play and see how it goes. But nonetheless, uh, the 4,200 is still the battle battleground to see what happens. Uh, again, last time we hit 4,300, you have to be very mindful. The last time we hit 4,300 is the last time we had a huge dive to a new low. And so you have to be very careful of that. And we do have a huge, um, wedge being created here. Uh, if we hit the 4,300, that could be liquidity. And then you have to understand too, is if they are trying, if the market is trying uh, for people to lose, right? The market isn't just going to sell off because that would be just... So the market can't just go up or uh, just go down because obviously that would be a very easy play. Uh, the markets try to, uh, again, win the whole thing with the market is to understand that um, it's supply and demand and for the banks to win, they need liquidity and they need to run it up to certain points. It, very be, it could be very well what we're doing now is trying to get some sort of liquidity uh, punch out of this. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but nonetheless, we still have a recession to price in. Now, again, if you look at the NASDAQ, it's completely different. If you look at the Russell, it's completely different. Uh, but this SPX is kind of giving us a good gauge on kind of where the market is. Uh, and it's not really doing a whole lot. It's the battle back and forth. Um, as you can see over the past uh, couple months, we haven't, we've been in a very, very, very tight range. Uh, so we'll see what happens or comes of that. But nonetheless, uh, aside from that, um, we need to essentially break that, this current level here, which is that uh, the 42.32. And again, if we break that again, you got a pretty, you got a hard ceiling here, roughly around that, that uh, 4,300. 
and we'll see if that's the liquidity that they were looking for or otherwise uh, we need to hold that 4100 uh, it's a pretty big dip down to there it's about 120 points uh, if we do dip below there so we'll see what happens there bitcoin is pushed back up to about 28 uh, roughly still floating it could be a break a retest and sell off again we don't know it's still very much paired with uh, the market until uh, we get some sort of big news at this point gold again still a higher low uh could be a break and a retest we'll see if it can continue as long as it can continue to hold the 179 uh gold could still be going up and building up a bigger case here uh, again gold will be strong in a recession type scenario and since we've taught we said recession or the fed has said recession it's just a matter of time i think at this point um Tesla has really just been playing in this range between the 210 and roughly, roughly around here, the 163. So we're bouncing back and forth between there. Again, a lot of consolidation. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, moving forward. Uh, it's really day by day. I think there's any piece of news that can really do anything. Um, and then here with the Pelantir. I uh, kind of got a ceiling here roughly around the 1453. We'll see if this gets pulled back in for that. Again, very parabolic, this move here. Um, it's not really ideal, even though the current situation is that everybody is trying to jump into safe havens that say AI um, and hopes that it saves, <laughs> saves their account and makes some sort of money off their account because last year was absolutely bust with all the uh, sideways action that we had. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, snow. Uh, again, another big one had a big drop, a little pump today. It looks like a retest here. The 159. We'll see if we can make a lower low, potentially drop this down to the 133. So watching that as well. Uh, Apple, Meta, all those are still um, Google. Again, all very overextended. These are very, these are what are holding up the market. And look at how overextended they are. And something I've always talked about is you don't want this thing to be so overextended that, um, you know, that's not a healthy bull market. This thing just go overextended like that. Apple just straight up. It's at the top of the ceiling. Like there, there really isn't anywhere else to go. And there's not positive news. So this thing's going to eventually flip and start selling. Again, even in a bull market, this thing will at least pull back healthy, at least down to the 160. Um, we're not really seeing any kind of pullback right now, so you have to be very careful of that. BA, again, shop the 221.95. That's continued to sitting there. Golden Sachs continuing to chop roughly around the 136. Uh, just really sitting there. The banks really haven't done anything. I'm just really sitting here again. Golden Sachs just really kind of sitting around that uh, 220 or 329. That uh, ceiling being at 347. Bank of America. It's uh, again really tight, like the market itself. It's essentially playing between the $30 mark and that $27 mark. So we'll watch that as well. But again, I don't want to make this uh, too long. Again, there's not a lot of news right now. It's very much debt ceiling, very much uh, non-farms this week. That's pretty much going to be the case unless something happens with the banks. But again, I don't think we're going to hear anything from the banks until we get this debt ceiling deal stuff out of the way. Then I'm sure you're probably going to hear about the next set of banks, uh, especially because of the comments that BLA made just a week ago stating that there'll be more mergers. So there's other stuff going on that is not being uh, released to the public because of uh, the current state. So... With all that being said, if you made this far, I appreciate you. Go ahead and drop a like. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.